we are here to give the word. Happy Mother's Day Amen. to all the mothers out there. Uh, we love you. Thank you for um, playing the role in introducing the seed that God gave you to this world. Amen. We truly are thankful um, to be in a position to spread the gospel and uh, to give the Lord's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and so that we can glorify in his name and we can improve the quality of our lives. Amen. I know that um, it would be nice if I came up here and just said, thank God for all the mothers. God is good. Thank you, Lord, for my mom. Amen. Continue to serve the Lord. God bless you. You know, it would be very simple for me to just stick to the surface. Um, but what I've recognized is if we, well, the Holy Spirit showed me, is that if we only stay on the surface, we can only be used on the surface level. And I want to use the power of God's word to not only encourage you, but to empower you. Amen. Amen. So let's bow our heads and let's invite the Holy Spirit to dwell with us so we all get the proper understanding. Heavenly Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, thank you for the day. Thank you for the time that you have given us, Father, to glorify you. Lord, you created this day, and this day we should rejoice and be glad in it, Father. Lord, thank you for continuing to show us your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Father. Lord, we are truly thankful for the wisdom that you give unto us liberally, Father. Lord, thank you for showing us that as long as we seek you first, everything else will fall in line. Thank you, Father, for showing us that all we need to know is what is written in your word. Thank you, Father for this Mother's Day, so that we can still receive the gospel in your, in your house. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. So if you um, tuned in on Wednesday, uh, I came from Genesis 18, and I was speaking on... Um, leaning on your own understanding, especially whenever it comes to parenthood. Um, it's no coincidence that the Lord gave me that word um, last Wednesday because it ties into the message that he gave me today. Amen. Um, we know that God makes no mistakes, but we do. <laughs> Amen. So we should always look for an opportunity to serve the Lord at a greater measure than we're currently at. Amen. And the only way to do so is to lean on his understanding and lean on his original purpose for us. Amen. So if you didn't, um, get to view that message. It's on Facebook. It's on YouTube. Um, today will also be in Genesis. Uh, today will be coming from Genesis 16, 1 through 6. Once again, Genesis 16, 1 through 6. Amen. Amen. This word is going to is going to make you. Um, I guess it's depending on your measure, huh? your measure of faith. But this is the word of God. So as long as you apply it, as long as you listen with the correct ears, um, this his word will improve the quality of your life. 
Genesis 16 and 1. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be, someone say maybe, that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. Sounds familiar? Verse 3. And Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. There's a lot, there's a lot going on here. Verse 4, And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised, in her eyes. Verse 5. And Sarah said unto Abram, My wrong be unto thee. I have given my maid into my bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. Mm -hmm. The Lord judge the Lord judge between me and thee. Verse 6. But Abram said unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. Amen. And that is Genesis 1 through 6. So, the topic of today's message is Build a baby. That is the title of this message. Build a baby. So, many might ask, Brother, how did you come up with that title? And the Holy Spirit gave me the analogy of a story called build a bear where there's a store in the mall my mom took my daughter to build a bear for her birthday and he gave me the analogy that some of us try to create a baby the same way that my daughter built a bear hmm. you get to pick their height you get to pick the color you get to pick all the features of that bear hmm. everything is up to you not one sign in that store says, what does God want your bear to look like? I'll repeat that. There's not one sign in that store that says, what does God want your bear to look like? See, we live in a time where, and there's no new thing under the sun, but us exemplifying our authority has become prioritized. We don't want to ask anybody for guidance. We don't want to ask anybody for mentorship because if what they tell us does not align with our will, then we want to cancel it. We live in this cancel culture. But is it possible that this person is sharpening you, but you are not ready for sharpening. Mm. 
See, to be to have a mentor, you have to be humble. But to stay on topic, verse one. Now Sarah Abram's wife bare no bare him with no children. So as we talked about before, our original purpose is to do what? Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. So Sarah is feeling a kind of way because she is not able to fulfill one of her purposes, her original purposes, not a purpose that she has created for herself, but the one that God has given her. Do you feel the pressure of fulfilling your original purpose? Do you feel as if the timing is not going to come before you transition. Hmm. Because a lot of us want to eat from the seed that we plant. We just don't want to plant the seed and not enjoy the fruit. So, Sarah is feeling some pressure because time is ticking and she has no children. She wants to be a mother and she wants to be a mother now. I want my money and I want it now. The pressure of wanting something now. Two, and Sarai said unto Abram, behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, Go in unto my maid. It may be, someone say maybe, that I may obtain children by her. Man. So Sarai goes to Abram and she tells him, The Lord hath restrained me from bearing. See, sometimes we can use the Lord's name to try to validate our opinion, our motive. Because that Sarai has not had a child yet, she thinks that she will never have a child. She is afraid that she will never become a mother. She's afraid that she will not be able to fulfill her original purpose. So, what did she do? See, this is the... Uh, What is fear causing you to do that God has not verified? But she comes up with this plan. The Holy Spirit says, do not mistake a comma for a period. Mm -hmm. Because you have not received the child yet does not mean you will never receive a child. Because you have not received the fruit yet, does not mean you will never receive the fruit. So she goes with this plan. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. May It may be that I may obtain children by her. The reason why I had you repeat may be is because whenever you go by something, um, whenever you go by your way, 
it's a possibility your way will work. Mm -hmm. It's not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. See, but see, this is why we like to go to hmm, go to places where we can have full authority, like build a bed. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what I pick, it's going to come out the way I want it to come out. That's a lot of a lot of times why we don't go to God first. Mm. It's because, Lord, I want it to look like what I want it to look like. Mm -hmm. I know your word says that all things work for the good who are called according to his purpose. But But I'm afraid, I'm fearful that what you want and what I want may not align. So that is the importance of being able to prioritize the Father. Mm -hmm. Because when we prioritize our own will, our own way, it's a maybe, it's not a for sure. Yeah. Whenever you go by God's way, it's for sure. It's yeah. guaranteed. There's no yeah. question. You can yeah. double down on that. But whenever we go by our way, our understanding, it's a maybe. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. If you have read Genesis two and three, you know the similarity of that scripture there. Adam and Eve. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. See, okay, I'll finish it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, three, and Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his, did it say maid? No. It says she gave and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. Oh, so now she is not the only one with the title of wife. Mm -hmm. The maid has now transferred titles or maid. Some would consider an upgrade. Four, and he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. See, It's a domino effect whenever you start to go by your own understanding. Mm -hmm. See, not only did not only did the decisions of Sarai cause Abram to have more than one wife. The actions of Sarah caused Abram to make a decision that God did not verify. God did not approve of that decision. See, 
See, Hagar was the maid. She was handling her chores, you know, dishes, clothes, things to that effect. But when Hagar saw that she was able to fulfill something, mm, she saw she was able to fulfill something that Sarah could not. And it made her look at Sarah in a different perspective. Now she is now that Hagar is pregnant and she had the responsibilities of chores, dishes, clothes, things to that effect, but now she's pregnant. So I'm sure a situation, it's a possibility that a situation has come up where Hagar's responsibilities came up and she was pregnant and Sarah came in and asked Hagar, why, why is the house looking like this? Why are the dishes not clean? Why are the clothes not folded? Why are the beds not made? Why is there not food being prepared? And guess what Hagar's response was? I'm pregnant. So every time that Hagar reminded Sarah that she's pregnant because of her. Oh man. <laughs> Woo. Talk about double edged. I'm pregnant because of you. If you never gave me the instruction to lay down with your husband, I would not be pregnant. Motherhood. The pressure. of experiencing motherhood on our timing. See, verse five, and Sarah said unto Abram, my wrong be upon thee. <laughs> I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. In verse 5, Sarah is doing the same thing that Eve did to Adam, but not blaming the serpent, but she is blaming Abram. Mm -hmm. She is blaming Abram She is blaming Abram about something that Abram has no control over. Abram is only the giver of the seed. See, God is the one that forms the child. Mm -hmm. See, God knows the child before the child is in the mother's womb. Later. So, he's blaming Abram. Is it a possibility that she thought that it could have been on Abram? But then, once Hagar gets pregnant, not because they had to try multiple times the first time, Hagar gets pregnant. But see, the difference with Sarah is that she says, the Lord judge between me and thee. See, Sarah knows that there will be judgment to come. But she also says the judgment comes from the Lord. See, she's the first one to use what Tupac has said, only God can judge. See, she 
she hasn't fully accepted her decision now because she's blaming Abram for a situation she created. Please do not punish your spouse because they followed your instruction, but it did not play out the way you thought it would. You are literally punishing them because they followed your instruction. You are You are not giving this person help to fulfill their original purpose. What you have done is now you have prioritized your dominion over what God has instructed. So when we do that, what do you think is going to happen? You're not going to bear the fullness of the fruit that you could. But Abram said unto Sarah, Behold, this is Abram's response. Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. So, we have to not overlook how detailed the word of God is. Because, but Abram said unto Sarah, Behold, thy what? Thy maid. Abraham has now reduced Hagar back to a maid. When Abram has done this, he has now made a distinction between who has the power. Because in the beginning, remember, Hagar is the maid of Sarah. So Abraham, I mean, Abram, this is before he becomes Abraham. Abram reminds, <laughs> reminds Sarah that she originally started as a maid. Mm. And then he says, due to her, as it pleaseth thee. See, if I did unto some people how it would please me, it would not glorify God. <laughs> okay. There are some of us men that um would rather say what our women want to hear. Mm. I know this is about mothers, I get it, but Take the, take the nuggets and, and apply it so it can improve the quality of your life. But some of us have the tendency to just say what wants to be heard. Instead of saying, what does God say about it? Mm -hmm. Have you consulted the Lord? Have you prayed on it? Because any time that our flesh is pleased, there's error somewhere, somewhere. You might not, you might be lying to yourself so that you don't see the error. You're not able to confront the elephant in the room. But anytime that your flesh is pleased, in some way, you are satisfying your flesh and overlooking what God has originally instructed. Mm -hmm. So, 
That is Genesis 16, 1 through 6. Now, in Genesis 18, This is where the Lord tells Sarah that she will bear a son. Genesis 18, we'll start at verse 11. Now Abram and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah, and this is where, I don't even have time, but this is where God has made a new creature out of the same dust. Abram is now Abraham. Sarai is now Sarah. Don't have the time. Okay. Now Abram oops, and stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman. Twelve. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Where Thirteen, and the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I, of a surety, bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. That is uh, Genesis eighteen and fourteen. Fifteen. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not. For she was afraid, and he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Mm -hmm. So, in, in Genesis 18, that is where God tells Sarah, You will have a child. But in Genesis 16, she went by her own way to, to bear a son. Mm -hmm. See, somebody may be asking, Brother, how does that tie in? See, before you go into that Build-A-Bear, before you start trying to build a baby on your own understanding, I encourage you to be patient on God's timing. Because God Man. already had the timing for her to bear a child, but she wanted that child now. Man. See, some may be asking, Lord, I'm in my 30s, I'm in my 40s, why haven't you given me this? Man. It's not time yet. Man. God is still sharpening you. God is still giving you the tools to be equipped to handle this responsibility of parenthood. See, a lot of us enjoy the action <laughs> that, that, that produces a child, but we don't recognize the responsibility of having a child. Ooh, yeah. See, that takes time yeah. to be able to have the tools to be equipped to have a child. And no matter how much knowledge you obtain, it is not going to prepare you. Yeah. See, the more wisdom that you obtain, the more word of God you obtain, now you are prepared. See, the more you seek the Lord, the more that you understand Matthew 6.33. Because once these children get on this earth, there is an opportunity for that child to become your idol. Mm -hmm. I'm, hey. Woo. Boy, thank you, Lord, for mm -hmm. showing us that our creation shall not be idolized mm -hmm. because you are our creator. It's just it's it's a it's a pass down. It's like um now God is giving you <laughs> a little bit of an insight about how he had to forgive you so many times before you even knew that he was with you. See, our parenting is just a little glimpse of what God had to deal with. <laughs> you <laughs> you have one or two children. Just God has thousands of children and all of them sin differently so could you imagine 
dealing with thousands of children that sin so much differently that your grace has to be sufficient for all of them. Not just for the ones that commit adultery, not just for the ones that steal, not just for the ones that kill. Your grace has to be sufficient for all sins. See, your parenting is just a little glimpse of what God has to deal with. So before you try to rush being a mother, being a father, be patient and wait on God's time. Let's give God a hand praise. Thank you, Father. If you have any questions, uh, please jot them down. Any comments, jot them down. Um, Once again, this is about not going by your own understanding, not rushing the process of of the fruits that God has already ordained for you because God has already had has the harvest for you. You just have to walk it out. You just have to receive it. God already has the victory for you. You just have to receive the belt. You just have to receive the trophy. But the thing is, we see everybody receiving their trophy and we, Lord, where's my trophy? Hey, hey there's, there's teenagers not even trying to have kids. I want a kid. Why do they get it? But I don't. Hmm. See, they're not even trying to receive what I what I'm working so hard for. That's also what happens when we start comparing blessings. Yeah. Stay focused on your life, yeah. and nobody else can influence it. So, before you go to that build a baby, before you go to that build a bear. Wait on the Lord because he already has greater than what you expect to receive. Because uh, if you didn't get Wednesday, that's going to help the understanding behind this. That we are quick to do something from our own motivation, our own ambition. But our own ambition can pollute glorifying the Lord. Amen? Amen. So, thank you, Father, for your word. Let's bow our head. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, thank you for the word that you have given me to give to your people. Lord, I ask as we go back out into the world that we receive this word fully, Father, that we take this word, we stand on it, and we are confident in your timing, Father, that no matter what anyone else is going through, that we will not question the blessings that you have for our life. We will not question the timing. We will not try to get a baby on credit. We will not try to get a baby by our own will. We will not try to get something from a worldly strategy because we know that your divine intervention is more than enough. Your divine will, your your ordained plan is more than enough, Father. So, Lord, thank you for showing us that we should... Stand on your will, your way, and your ways are not our ways. Thank you, Father, for never letting your word come back void. We love you, Father, and thank you for loving us first. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank you for tuning in. Amen. This is another House of Usher Dot podcast. We're online every Wednesday at 7 p.m., every Sunday, 10 a.m. Please check us out on YouTube. We do have a YouTube page. Follow us. If this word helped you, please share it. And... Uh, once again, happy Mother's Day. Enjoy the day. Um, those that mothers may have transitioned already, enjoy the good times. And remember the good memories. Don't don't get so deep into your feelings that you're not able to enjoy the time that God has ordained. Amen. Yeah. So enjoy the day. Have a great week. Continue to serve the Lord. God bless you.